This video explains how to display the structure of a data object using the strip function in the R programming language. So without much talk, let's dive into the R code. In the first example of this video, I will show you how to inspect the structure of a data frame object. And for this, we first need to create a data frame, as you can see in lines 2 to 4 of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data frame object is appearing at the top right, which is called data. And we can print our data frame to the bottom in the R Studio console by running line 5 of the code. And then you can see at the bottom that our data frame contains five rows and the three columns x1, x2 and x3. Now, if you want to inspect the structure of this data frame, then we can apply the str function to this data frame, as you can see in line 7 of the code. So after running this line of code, a new output is returned, which tells us that we are dealing with a data frame. Our data frame has five observations and three variables. And then it shows the names of the different data frame columns, the class of those columns, and some of the values of these columns. So as you can see, the str function can be used to get a very good overview what your data objects contain. In this first example, I have explained how to apply the str function to a data frame object. However, we can also apply the str function to a list object, as you can see in the next example, starting in line 9 of the code. So first, we have to create an example list, as you can see in lines 9 to 11. And we can also print this list to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 12 of the code. And then you can see that our list contains three list elements, which contain different values. Now, if we want to inspect this list using the str function, we can once again simply apply the str function to our data object. So in this case, our data object is called myList. So after running line 14 of the code, you can see another output at the bottom in the RStudio console, which shows that we are dealing with a list containing three list elements. And it also shows the classes of the different list elements. In the third example, I want to show you how to apply the str function to a vector object. And once again, we need to create some example data, as you can see in line 16 of the code. And we can also print our example vector to the console by running line 17. And then you can see that we have created a vector object containing eight integer values. Now, if we apply the str function to this vector, another output is returned, which shows the class of our vector, which is in this case numeric and it shows the number of elements in our vector object. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.